KMUE proudly presents Something to Think About. Your host, Mark Turner. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Today's program is devoted to a balanced approach in music education. And a balanced approach is a little more tricky to achieve than at first we might think. Education, music education, part of education, go figure, is part of the helping professions. As you can see here, that includes pastors, nurses, social workers, as well as teachers. Now, in the helping professions, help is the operative word. And we always think of ourselves as servants. We serve someone else's needs. We're there for someone else. And, and this is a good thing more often than not. And sometimes we may think of it as a little bit of Spock in Wrath of Khan. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And sometimes we simply give and give and give again until we're completely spent to the point where we might feel that we're a doormat and people wipe their feet upon us, which is not really a good thing. Chris Higgins wrote a book a couple of years ago called The Good Life of Teaching, and in it he sets forth a thesis that being a helping profession is a double-edged sword. It does have its good qualities, and it also has things about it that make it not the greatest of vocations. He begins by suggesting that there's virtue in what we do. There are good things. There's good that comes out of any occupation. External goods relate to extrinsic things, money, prestige, awards, those sort of things. There are also internal goods. And the internal goods are those things that keep you fresh and alive. For music, this is a real easy one. It's music itself. It's the music we make that keeps us going. When we look at the point of education, what is the point of education? Is it to teach or to learn? We have both. We can't not have both. We have to learn, and then there are some we teach somehow. Of the two, the more important is to learn. If the learning of music is the making of music, then there needs to be some making of music in the school with everyone. And we can see how this might be more appropriate or applicable to secondary, but it really needs to be at the elementary as well. This idea of teaching and learning and music leads us to this conundrum. We're kind of caught between two worlds. On the left, you see, we have a world of teaching where the adult is helping the child learn something on an ORF instrument. And on the right, we have a performance there in some sort of a church or cathedral. We have the teaching and we have the performance. And then we get in this bickering fight about, okay, well, that's not music. If it's an ORF instrument, that's not really music. Come on. Come on. And the other side is going to say, well, you're not really teaching. You're just abusing kids. And we could go back and forth, but it's not going to change the dynamic of what's going on. We're caught between these two worlds, and we must reconcile the differences. The great thing about performance, performance in a basketball game, a football game, a hockey game, a choir concert, band concert, a theatrical presentation, whatever it is, 
is that there is the doing of something and everyone is involved in the doing of something. Here in this football game, the coach is not really happy with the player because there's a game at stake. In this picture, the conductor's not happy with someone else because there is a performance at stake. It isn't the conductor and it isn't the player, it's the music that is at stake. It isn't the coach, it's not the player, it's the outcome of the game that is at stake. Everything else is secondary to that. And here we have the omnipotent conductor who basks in the glory of the adulations because this performance was the fruit of his labor or her labor. It's all because of me. I put this together. So the question that we're posed with, or the question that we must answer, is how does one keep a genuine foothold in each practical world without making a mockery of the other? Foothold in practical world, in two practical worlds, one of music, and one of education. The Greeks believed that humans were born with four arms and four legs and two heads, and that Zeus was upset one day and ripped us apart. The rest of our lives are devoted to trying to find that other half. For us, one half is the artist, and the other is the educator, the teacher, that we're trying to find the two because without having both of them, we're not whole. It's as if we're driving down the highway and we are straddling this gap. And on one side is the musician side and the other side is the teacher. We need to honor both practices and we need to honor ourselves. This is part of what Higgins is trying to say. The art of music must be honored. The institutions of education are never going away. So how can we reconcile my artistic rights and their musical rights? I have rights. I should get something musical from musical interactions, regardless of age level. And children should get something educational from a musical interaction. Both sides are looking for something. Sometimes it's the same thing, sometimes it's different. And the goal is, or the challenge is, how do we bring these two worlds together so that both parties, the adult and the children, can mutually benefit from this interaction. Again, how does one keep a genuine foothold in each practical world without making a mockery of the other? We have choices. We have choices and we have stereotypes and these are very much stereotypes. There's the tyrant, there's the omnipotent conductor, and there's this humble, self-effacing servant. More often than not, the two on the left are going to be at the secondary level, but as an elementary person, I have done my share of shouting and screaming, unfortunately. Any of those, any of these are not good in and of themselves. Each of them is an extreme. And it's easy for us to go to the extremes because that's what we've experienced. On the one hand, conductors, omnipotent or tyrants, or directors for that matter, only looking toward the art, they do not honor students. And if you're nothing but a self-effacing servant, you're not honoring yourself as a musician or your children as musicians. 
we must find middle ground. And, and that's what Higgins is talking about, finding a middle ground, an active, reflective musician engaged in art, engaged in making music, making decisions, making choices, where musicians, both young and old, are executing their cognitive skills, their cognitive musical skills, their technical skills, and their interpretive skills. And when this happens, we have a community, we have solidarity, and we have reciprocity. We have a community of musicians who are all pulling in the same direction for the same reasons, and there is mutual respect. It is, I believe, an ideal balance. There is no silver bullet, there is no lone ranger. No one thing will ever work. We cannot be only the musician, we cannot be only the teacher. There must be a middle ground. As always, I want you to take whatever I say with a grain of salt, think about it, mull it over, and chat with your friends and colleagues. Thanks much. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.